It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two thieves, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by him derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him and among themselves and saying, he saved himself or he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him and drink saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathe his last. <sighs> now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broke. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has raised.
So we sing hallelujah, and we sing hallelujah, and we sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome, and we sing hallelujah. Come on, come on. We sing hallelujah, and we sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome, and we sing hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome, and we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. Resurrection Sunday, and we know our King is alive. Hallelujah. Clap your hands like this. The Lamb. The Lamb that was slain, He's alive. Yeah, yeah. Forever He shall reign. Forever He shall reign, He's alive. Come on, they crucified Him at Calvary. Hey. They crucified Him at Calvary, but He rose Come on, y'all know it. Sing, sing, He's alive. He's alive. Come on, say. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. See, he's alive. 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 With all power in his hands. See, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power. Let's take it the lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him at Calvary. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. Say hero, hero in glory, 
Let's put them on the mighty hero, hero, in glory, in glory, with all power, with all power and, authority. and authority. He conquered, he conquered, and enemy, he took them on the mighty hero, hero, in glory, in glory, with all power, with all power and authority. He conquered, he conquered, and enemy, he took them on the mighty hero, hero, in glory, in glory, with all power, with all power and authority. He took them on the mighty hero, hero, in glory, in glory, with all power, with all power and authority. He took them on the mighty hero, hero, in glory, in glory, with all power, with all power and authority. He took them on the mighty hero, hero, in glory, in glory, with all power, with all power and authority. You believe it. Heroes in glory, with all power and authority. He conquered, he conquered my enemies. He put them under my feet. Heroes in glory, in glory, with all power and authority. He conquered, he conquered my enemies. He put them under my feet. Heroes in glory, in glory, with all power and authority. He conquered, he conquered every one of my enemies. He put them under my feet. Heroes in glory, in glory, with all power. Defeated anymore. You don't feet. have to live in depression he anymore. He put them under. He put them under. He put them under. He put them under. The devil has no power. He put them under. I have the authority. He put them under. He put them under. He put them under. And he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Come on, if that doesn't get you on your feet, if that doesn't get you shout in the name of Jesus, if that doesn't get you stirred up in your authority, I don't know what will. The King is alive. He's risen. And He saved and delivered me. And He sat on that tree for you and me. And I won't sit still. I won't be quiet with all He's done for me. When I think of His goodness, when I think of His mercy, when I think of His love, I can't help but dance. I can't help but shout. I can't help but run. He's been too good. The blood of Jesus will do what no other thing will do for you. Counseling can't do it. Alcohol can't do it. No doctor can do it. No lawyer. But only the blood. Only the blood. Father, we praise you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We overcome because of the blood. I've been saved by the blood, delivered by the blood. And how many of y'all know he didn't stop at the cross? On that third day. Come on, on that third day. On that third day. On that third day. On that third day. On 
raging heroes in glory with all power and authority said he conquered my enemies he put them resurrection life on the inside of us because he rose you have resurrection power you have the authority because of what he did just give him a shout of praise right now father we're so grateful for what you did on the cross we're so thankful that you rose in victory and we're so thankful that you've given that to me that you've given that to us father we praise you we lift you up hallelujah hallelujah it's good to be in church on Easter just give him a shout of praise one more time. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. There's nobody like you. Jesus, there's no other king, no other person that stands before you. Hallelujah, you're the king over my life and we worship you in this place. Happy Resurrection Sunday. From wherever you're joining us from, we worship him in this place. We love him, we honor him. It's not about a program or a song, it's about the king of kings. Father, we worship you in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if you can, turn to the person next to you, tell them Happy Easter. Talk to somebody you've never talked to, and turn your eyes to the screen. We have a video we'd like to show. I think the thing that concerns me the most is not just what may be coming our way, but that maybe the church isn't ready for what's coming our way. I see the place packed with people because of the presence of God, because of spiritual gifts in operation, because of ministry gifts being around here, because of the glory of God being in manifestation, because ultimately the presence of God getting so thick, people can't wait to get in here. But I'll tell you one thing, the presence of God is something the devil can't duplicate. He can duplicate talent, he can duplicate smoke, he can duplicate light. There's a lot he can duplicate, but I'll tell you what, he can't get near the presence of God. He said, draw near and I'll draw near to you. I'm passionate about drawing near to him. I'm going after God. We need to live in a place of constant awareness of his presence. Glory to God. Mark it on your calendars, April 21 through 24. Tomorrow's April 1st, but this is no joke. We are really having a conference on uh, April 21 through 24, and we hope that you all will make it out. We'll be doing mornings as well as evenings, and it's going to be quite the event. And uh, we're just believing that the presence of God is going to be here in every service. Woo! You say, what else is going to happen? Well, what do you need? What do you need? In his presence is fullness of joy. And his right hand pleasures evermore. What do you need? Maybe you need healing. Get in the presence of God. I'm telling you what. So I invite you all to come back. Join with us in this conference. So I was sitting on the front row. I am so happy that because he lives, we live. If we're born again, know Jesus, we have tapped into eternal life. You say, does that mean you're going to live forever? Spiritually speaking, yes. Physically speaking, probably not. This body will pass away, but my spirit man, my spirit person on the inside will go to be with Jesus eternally. I'm telling you what, that gives me great joy. Great joy. I was at a, uh, when, when we were singing and praising God, resurrected life, um, I had a flashback to this funeral that I was in a few years back. I was sitting on the front row. My husband was one of the speakers. This was of a dear friend who had fought the good fight and um, crossed over into heaven, uh, waiting for the rest of us to show up. So she's over there rejoicing with us. But um, I was sitting on the front row, and it was really, 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 really quiet. You know what I mean? Y'all been to funerals like that. Almost morbid, so quiet. 
And I was sitting on the front row and I, I was just listening. I really wasn't thinking anything. And all of a sudden, I had my phone in my purse under my seat right by my legs. All of a sudden, I hear the happy song begin to play. On my, my ring is the happy song. If you don't know what the happy, 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 well, that's what started playing in the middle of the funeral on the front row. And I thought, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. And I'm frantically trying to grab my purse, grab my phone and shut it up. All, all the while it gets louder and louder when you take it out of your purse. I was horrified to say the least. But later I thought, that was the most perfect thing that could have happened in that funeral. <laughs> because we can be happy. We can rejoice. Yes, our loved ones, we're going to miss them on this side. But we have the hope to know that because he lives, we live. And we're going to meet up with all of us in the rapture. We're going to live eternally, all of us together. You say, you really believe that? With all of my heart. That gives me great joy. Great joy. It makes me happy. So the next time you're in a funeral, make sure your phone is turned off. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, there's eternal life on the inside of us. And because he lives, we too will live. So I um, had to share that. Just thought I'd share that moment. That was just one of those moments I'll never forget. <clears throat> never repeat, but never forget. So now I make sure my phone is off when I go to meeting uh, funerals like that. Anyway, I want to welcome you. Happy Easter! <laughs> woo -hoo! We're so glad to see you. So glad to have you with us this morning. If you are a first-time guest, welcome. We hope by the time you leave, you're going to feel so at home. Go ahead. We're so glad to have you with us this morning. We believe that, uh, that you are somebody's answer to prayer, that you came, and we're so glad you showed up. Uh, if you are a guest, you can take your phone out and text the word welcome, or there's a, gift, uh, a guest card in the seat back in front of you, so I'll go through both. You can do the guest card, or you can take your phone, text the word welcome to 918-215-7066. There could be a coupon that will come back on your phone, um, or you can, if you fill out the card, you can tear off the bottom part, put the top part in the offering, keep the bottom part, and then at the end of the service, we have cafe uh, as you exit these doors right to your left uh, we have a cafe and we have a free drink of your choice that's waiting for you I think we have an Easter special drink today and so uh, yeah is it the purple one berry crunch frap yummers I tried it sneak a sneak taste it's good so uh, but anyway you get a free drink of whatever you want uh, so I encourage you to take your phone take your little card uh, back by the cafe but thank you for coming today thank you for coming thank you for being here believe that your life will be changed and that you'll want to come back we're here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, we're here every first Wednesday, which happens to be this coming Wednesday. We'll be here again. Uh, our youth, we have an amazing youth ministry. They meet every Wednesday over in the building adjacent to this one. So um, your kids, if you've got little ones, they're in that half of the building being ministered to. And I'll just say that again. They're being ministered to this morning. They are hearing the same thing we're going to be hearing, that Jesus died for their sins, but he rose again. What a life-changing message, life-changing message. So uh, one other thing I want to just make, um, uh, make you aware of, and also reminder, April 13th, we have our Lady Spring Charcuterie. It's going to be on Saturday afternoon uh, on, from 2 to 4. It's going to be a great time to connect, meet people, just enjoy one another. And um, you do need to sign up. The deadline to sign up is next Sunday. So don't wait till the last minute. If you know you're coming, get a ticket. They're $10 a ticket. You can go online under the events, or you can stop by the Connect Center, and they'll help you sign up there. But we hope that many of you come. It's just a special event just for ladies. Sorry, guys. But we're going to have a, a really, really fun afternoon for, from 2 to 4. So I hopefully you'll come bring a friend and uh, we will see you there at that point Let me just go ahead and read a scripture to you Psalms 35 27 says let them shout for joy and be glad It doesn't say let them shout for joy and remain sad You know you can't shout and be glad at the same time Or you can't shout and remain sad at the same time it says let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant 
Did you know that God wants you blessed? He wants all of your needs. Many says, I'm the God that will meet your needs according to my riches and glory. God cares about us. He never, he, the Bible says uh, that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. I love that. God will meet your needs. He'll return to you uh, what he has said in his word. He watches over his word to perform it, and we can trust him, and we can take that to the bank, as the saying goes. If you would like to give, uh, there's the online ways to give are on the screen behind me. Uh, there's also envelopes in the front of your seat. If you would like to give that way, uh, just mix faith with whatever you do. Mix faith with your seed you sow and, uh, and give them a shout of praise. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your word. We thank you for, uh, for watching over your word. We do shout for joy. We shout and we're glad because we know that you want us blessed. You watch over your word. You want us blessed. And we thank you for it. You meet all of our needs according to your riches in glory. In the mighty name we pray. Okay, let's give him a shout. One, two, three. Yeah. Hallelujah. After you've sowed your seed, go ahead and stand to your feet and join with us in some more worship.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's give him thanks. This is Easter. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All glory, all honor, all praise, all thanks. Unto you now and forevermore. Thank you, dear Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we, uh, we give you praise and glory. Honor, thanks, all praise, all glory, all honor, all thanks. Father, all eternity, we're going to remind you of how grateful we are. All through eternity, we're going to give you thanks because you so loved the world when we didn't serve you. We didn't know you, but you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Jesus, all through eternity, we're going to praise our risen Savior. We're going to give you thanks all through eternity. The one with the nail prints in his hands, the spear print in his sides. We're going to give you praise and thanks. We're going to be forever grateful. Not just down here, but over on the other side. Because we'll be with you forever. Hallelujah. We're grateful for it. We're thankful for it. Father, we thank you for the great plan of redemption. You set in motion when Jesus was called the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You set it in motion. When you said back there to that serpent in the garden, you said, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. He'll bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We're thankful for it, dear Father, and we celebrate it today. We celebrate the great plan of redemption that Jesus came, consummated, completed, finished for us through his wonderful death, burial, and resurrection. We're grateful for it. Father, I thank you for each one of us. May we... Uh, in the days to come may we have a better understanding of the price that was paid what was purchased for us what was accomplished for us what we live in what we walk in in him we live and we move and we have our being may we have a better understanding of the one that was put under our feet hallelujah where we're seated where we're placed thank you father may we have a better understanding all the way through of the authority that we have as believers what redemption has done for us. We are the redeemed of the Lord, and we boldly say so. And so we thank you for it, dear Father. In the wonderful name of Jesus, thank you for our time here together to be able, and we're grateful, dear Father, to live in a nation where we can gather together like this. Not wonder if we're going to get locked up. Not wonder if we're going to get invaded by some uh, army or something. We're, we're just grateful, Father, that we live in a nation where we have this freedom. And we pray this freedom will main, remain in our nation until the church heads out and leaves. And we're grateful and thankful for it in Jesus' name, Father. Hallelujah. Now we thank you in advance for all that will be done through the entire service. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, one more time, we'll have to just lift our hands and give him thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, you can be seated. <coughs> so good to see everybody on this wonderful resurrection morning. Hallelujah. It's Easter, but I'll tell you what, it's Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. And we have a resurrection life living on the inside of us if we are Christ. Hallelujah. We're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. You know, um, I, was thinking I, I got a, uh, uh, a text last night from a, a pastor friend of mine, and I said, that's real good. I'm going to borrow that tomorrow morning. It says, the best news to ever hit the earth came out of a graveyard. He's not here. He's risen. That's pretty good. Best news ever to hit planet Earth was in a graveyard. Hallelujah. In an empty tomb. But um, we're going to, uh, this morning, we're going to just go back through and we're going to talk, uh, cover some things about uh, the three days. You know, we've been on planet Earth for about, oh, what, 6,000 years of recorded humanity. But there, in the middle of that, there were three days that changed planet Earth forever. Three days that changed humanity. Three days that changed eternity. Out of all that time, there were three days. And that's what we're celebrating today. Resurrection weekend. And um, uh, we're going to start over in Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Romans chapter 4, verse 25, where the Apostle Paul's writing over here to the Romans, the, the, the church at Rome. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. 
And he says, uh, talking about Jesus, he said, who was delivered for our offenses and who was raised again for our justification. Now, don't let those words throw you. We'll swing back around to that in a few minutes. But um, it says here, who was uh, delivered for our offenses. Jesus went to the cross and was delivered for our offenses. He, he was delivered to pay for our mistakes. He was delivered to pay for all of our mistakes. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. He went for the world. What he did was for the world. Anybody in the world can receive Jesus and receive the benefits of what he did at the cross. But when he went to the cross, he paid for our offenses. We've all missed it. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. There's no perfect one except Jesus and he's up there praying for the rest of us. But if you go back through, he... Uh, he was delivered for our offenses. Over there in the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, I think of verse 4, it says, uh, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. When he went to the cross, he, you know, 700 years before Jesus came and went to the cross, Isaiah saw this in a vision, okay? And if you go back through, you'll see that the disciples could tell us what the cross looked like, okay? Isaiah could tell us what was accomplished, but then you got what Paul wanted us to see, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But if you go back through there, he was delivered for our offenses. When he went to the cross, um, you know, if you've ever seen the passion of the Christ, it was um, hard to watch. And that's just Hollywood's version. That's not even reality. He paid a price for us. So anyway, Jesus, you know, back there, when he was about 33 and a half years old, he stepped into his ministry at, th at uh, 30, about 30 years old, three and a half years. He, he ministered on planet Earth. And then at the fulfillment of that, at the fullness of that, he went to the cross and paid the price for us. Okay, so wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's the price he paid, okay? And at that point, you know, he, he uh, it was about the... The ninth hour of the day, which is about three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus, when all had been paid, bore the stripes, okay, had the, the, uh, the crown of thorns put upon his head. He wore a crown of thorns so we could have the peace of God in our minds. He, took, he became our substitute. When Jesus went to the cross, he became the substitute of humanity. He paid the price. He redeemed us. He purchased us. He paid for us. Everyone, the worst human on earth. You know, you hear about the things that happened over in Israel with Hamas and the, the horrific, horrific things. But you know, Jesus paid the same price for every one of those people. Yeah. Paid the same price for every one of those that did horrific things. They just don't know about it. Yeah. But anyway, Jesus uh, paid the price for us. And then about, he, he was the Passover lamb that took away the sins of the world, which meant he had to die somewhere between the ninth and the 11th hours. That's the Passover lamb. That was the time the Passover lamb had to die back in the book of Exodus. So about the ninth hour, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the Bible said he, um, he cried out and said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, he had become us. He took our place. Why did God have to turn his back on Jesus? Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Why did God have to turn his back on Jesus? Because he became us. He became, he didn't just carry it, he became the sins and iniquity of the world. So he paid the price. So Jesus, at that point, the sins, iniquity, sickness, disease, poverty, fear, lack, failure, the sad, lost condition of planet Earth from beginning to end, God reached down. At that point, Jesus is on the cross. God reaches down to the very beginning from the time in Genesis, I believe, the third chapter, where Adam listened to that serpent and disobeyed God, obeyed Satan, and humanity fell. And as in Adam, all have fallen, okay? Every seed produces after its own kind. So Adam back there, about the third chapter of the book of Genesis, when God said, there's your garden, it's your, pl garden. It's your place, watch over it, take care of it, keep it, etc." But there's two trees in the midst of the garden. One is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, one's the tree of life. Tree of life, eat all you want. Tree of knowledge of good and evil, do not eat of that tree, for in the day you do, you'll surely die. Die didn't mean die physically. Die meant die spiritually or be separated from the Father of lights. Well, of course, you know which one he's hanging around, keeping an eye on that stupid talking snake. So anyway, when he did that, from the time Adam fell and separation from God came on all of humanity, from that point, God reached down to the beginning 
And he took all that and he pulled it up to the cross. Then he reached down to the end and took everything right up to the end of time. Grabbed all that, all the sin, iniquity, sickness, and disease, and he pulled that back. So he reached the beginning, pulled it up, reached to the end, pulled it back, laid it all on Jesus. And then Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he cried out and said, it's finished, and gave up the ghost. But it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. Then here comes the third day. You got, the, you got three women that went early in the morning the third day. You know, Jesus came back early the third day. Now, there's a message in there. We're living in the third day, since Jesus, the third thousand years since Jesus came to earth the first time. He's got a habit of coming back early the third day. We may not be around here long. He's on his way back to catch us up and take us home. But anyway, anyway, so, so Jesus pays the price. Okay, he becomes the sacrifice for all of humanity. And we see that. And then, of course, it says right here, he was delivered for our offenses. He, was he took my place. Any dumb thing I ever did, any spirit of stupid I ever walked in, every mistake I ever made, Jesus took every bit of that from the worst to the best person. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. So Jesus took our places. That was me. That's where I belong. That was, that's me that should have been on the cross. That's me that should have died. That's me that should have borne all that. But he became my sacrifice, and he took that for me, took that for all of humanity. So then we read on, it says, he was delivered for our offenses, Romans uh, 4.25. He was delivered for our offenses, but he was raised again for our justification. Now, don't let that word justification bother you. I like somebody said one time, the word justified means just as if I'd never done anything wrong. I got, my, my, my mistakes got paid for, but then it didn't stop there. Then I got justified. See, you could have your sins paid for with the blood of bulls and goats under the old covenant, but you're going to turn around and do the same thing because it's not just a sin problem, it's a sinner problem. I had to not only have my mistakes forgiven, I needed to have my nature changed. So he's delivered for our offenses, but he was raised again for our justification. He was raised again so... Uh, my, uh, not only would my past be forgiven, but uh, justification where God could look at me as if I never made a mistake in my life. Tell you, that's a nice feeling. I, you know, I remember when I got my life right with God, November 1972, I didn't quite understand all of what took place, but all I knew was God's looking at me different. Because all of a sudden, everything I've done is paid for. Every mistake I've ever made, I have been justified. God's looking at me just as if I'd never made a mistake. Okay, so... In his death, he paid my debt. In his death, he became my substitute. But let's look at a little bit at the resurrection. Then we're going to turn around and come back. In his resurrection, he, first of all, he acquitted me. Second of all, he declared me innocent. Thirdly, he expunged my record. I've known some folks over the years, made some bad mistakes, paid the price, paid their price for it. But then there's always that record hanging over their head. Always there. But then every now and then, I've heard about some folks, every now and then something happens and their record gets expunged. That means it gets destroyed. It doesn't just get sealed up. It gets burned up. He declared me innocent. He expunged my record. That's why, you know, that's why I can go to a class reunion. Somebody can say, do you remember such and such? And I go, I don't remember that. Must have been some old guy that died. He expunged my record. He erased my past. Oh, I remember what you used to do. No, not before I got born again. I became a new creature in Christ. He expunged my record. This is what the resurrection did. His death on the cross paid for my mistakes, but it had to go on from there. Paid for my mistakes, but I still had to be changed. That took care of the outside. I needed something to take care of the inside. He declared me innocent. He expunged my record. He erased my past. He gave me a new start. Amen. Say, well, when were you born? 1950? No, I wasn't born in 1953. I was born in, I was born in 1972. I'm really young. Gave me a new start. Adopted me as a child of God. I got grafted in. I got adopted. Hallelujah. He chose me. He picked me out, went after me, brought me in. I got adopted as a child of God. And then what he did was he made me righteous. He made me right with himself. That's what the resurrection did. 
Okay, so he was delivered for my offenses. He was raised again for my justification. That's what all he did. The minute I said, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life, everything Jesus did through his death, burial, and resurrection got imparted to me. I became a new creature. I'm righteous. I'm in right standing with God, not by what I did, but by what he did. I'm not right in my own righteousness. I'm righteous in his righteousness. But my question's this. When we see Jesus back there, Isaiah 53, we see Jesus, you know, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and so on. We see Jesus in the Gospels when at the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he yet cries out in John's Gospel, he cries out and says, it's finished, and gave up the ghost. He died. So we see that, and then we've got that, and then we don't see anything until early the third day. Well, what happened between these two places? What happened in there? Well, did they just take his body, lay it in the tomb, and it just laid there until his resurrection time? Can't do it. Body without the spirit's dead. There's no way he's going to go in there, spirit, soul, and body, lay in that grave for three days until it's time for him to come up. No, he had to go somewhere. For us today, for if we're born again, absent from the body is present with the Lord. It's an instant thing. The Bible said Jesus gave up the ghost. He released his spirit. When he's on the cross, he let go. He died there. His inward man had to go somewhere. Think about that. He is my substitute, which means when he went to the cross, he died for my sins. He died for my problems in my mind. He died for my sickness. He died for my disease. It cost heaven as much to get me healed as it did to get me saved. It cost heaven as much to get peace in my mind as it did to get the new birth in my spirit. Jesus paid, it cost heaven as much for everything. Jesus, Adam lost everything. Jesus, the last Adam, came to purchase it all back. So we look back there. So Jesus, when he died, what happened? He's still my substitute. Still my substitute. I mean, you know, stop thinking about a substitute. You know, somebody in a, in a uh, uh, you know, in, in, in some kind of uh, athletics. Somebody can't go into the game, so they send a substitute in. In other words, I mean, you stop and think. You watch the Super Bowl, I look at that. I look on the field and think, yeah, you can send me in. One play, they'd be carrying me off on a stretcher. Maybe an early burial, I don't know. But see, somebody has to go in there and do it. I can't do it, so i like somebody to go in for me. I couldn't take care of me. I couldn't take care of my sins. I couldn't live good enough to get it fixed. I couldn't live right enough to get all this washed away. I couldn't do all that. I couldn't get my mind fixed. You can have people walk you through your past way back from 20 years before you got born. You can have people walk through, all, they can take you through all kinds of things, but they're not going to straighten out your mind. You can't fix yourself. If you could fix yourself, you didn't need Jesus to come. He came in vain. So we look back here. So Jesus paid the price. Okay. And we see him to this point where he gives up the ghost and then we don't see him until early the third day. And when the, 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 the women got to, the, to the, the tomb, you know, the angels stand there and he said, he's not here, he's risen. He's already risen early the third day. So what happened in those three days there? Okay, we know what, we know what happened on the death. We know what happened on the resurrection. But what happened in these three days in between? Did he just go sit somewhere? Did God just say, Jesus, go bind your time. We'll take care of this in a few days. No, what did he do? That's what, like I said, uh, Isaiah had a vision of what the cross looked like. The disciples saw from the natural what the cross looked like. But most of the world, until the apostle Paul came and got caught up to the third heaven, heard things unlawful to be uttered, most of the world doesn't have a clue what happened between the cross and the resurrection. Boy, it's good in there. It's good for the church to know. Let's take a look at that. Let's go, let's go back through what took place in there. He's still my substitute. What did he do? Well, you know, what did he do? I, I was the one that deserved to die. He died for me. I was the one that deserved to go to the cross. He went for me. Okay? And what happened when he died, we know from the scriptures, the Bible said, Thou will not leave my soul in hell, nor suffer thine holy one to see corruption. When he died on the cross, his body was laid in the tomb. His body was laid in the grave. But his spirit man, his spirit man went where I deserved to go. His spirit went, man went down into the depths of hell. That was the place I should have gone eternally. Okay? Got all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So we see Jesus, he goes down into the regions of the damned. He goes down into hell where I deserve to go. And he's down there for about three days 
And suddenly, suddenly, God says, okay, justice is satisfied. The price has been paid. Man mankind has been redeemed. Mankind has been purchased. Somebody paid the price. And the Holy Ghost went down there. Jesus, the Bible said Jesus was quickened in spirit. Third day, the Holy Ghost went down into that region, went down there and quickened him. Quickened means made alive. Stop and think about that. Jesus made alive the Son. Holy Ghost made him alive the Holy Ghost. So you got two-thirds of the Godhead in the regions of hell down there. Something's going to happen. So suddenly Jesus is quickened in spirit. And when that took place, we know from the fourth chapter, I believe it is, of the book of uh, Hebrews, the Bible said Jesus destroyed, reduced to zero. Jesus destroyed him that had the power over death, that is the devil. devil. He, he reduced him to zero. Okay, now stick around. This gets better. Jesus went here in that region. He went, in, he went into, I like to word it this way, he went into the throne room of hell as a quickened person, one raised from the dead by the glory of God. He went into the region of the, um, the throne room of hell, went in there. First thing he did was destroyed, reduced to zero, him that had the power over death, that is the devil. Death has no more dominion over us. Destroyed him that had the power over death. Well, he didn't stop there. Colossians chapter 2 says, then he spoiled principalities and powers. So he's gone after the head of the thing. Now he's going after all the legs and the feet. Spoiled principalities and powers. Made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In what? His resurrection. So look at this. He dies on the cross, descended the depths of hell. The third day, he's quickened by the Holy Ghost. He goes marching into the throne room of hell. He destroys him that had the power over death, that is the devil. He spoils principalities and powers. He reduces Satan's army to nothing. And then he is raised. Raised from the dead. And then he's resurrected. Now, there's more we could go into, but we won't right now. Then he's resurrected. And the next thing we see, we watch taking place, once he's resurrected, he, uh, he goes to the Father's right hand. Now he's not only resurrected, but he's raised. He's resurrected from the dead. Now he goes to the Father's right hand, and the Bible said he sits down where he ever, lived, ever lives to make intercession for us. So he's, he's delivered, he's died, he's paid the price, gone to the depths of hell, he's quickened, he's gone and destroyed him that had the power over death. He spoiled principalities and powers, and then he's raised up, comes busting up out of the regions of hell, and he comes up, and that's why they said, he's not here, he's risen. He came, and of course, we, we know he did other things. He spent some time on planet Earth down here. But then he goes up, and a cloud receives him up out of their sight, and he goes up to the right hand of the Father. He's already gone up and taken his blood, poured it on the mercy seat. The judgment seat became a mercy seat. He entered once into the holy place of obtaining eternal redemption for us. We don't have to have somebody go in every year. We don't have to have a high priest go in every year. Jesus went once, one, one time, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And then what's he do? Then he sits down at the right hand of the Father. That's a place of authority. Sits down at the right hand of the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for us. All, he becomes the head over all things to the church and all things are under his feet. We're just singing about that. He's under my feet. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now that's good. That's for Jesus. What about the rest of us? What about us? What do we see now? Well, let's go back through because it doesn't stop there. See, something about between the death and the resurrection, God did a lot of amazing things. Okay, so we see what Jesus did. What about me? See, the minute I make Jesus Lord of my life, the minute I'm born again, the minute I'm in Christ, if any man be in Christ, what do you mean in Christ? That means I step out of me over into him. In Christ means I make Jesus Lord of my life. In Christ means I'm in union with him. I'm united to him. He and me become one. And what's in him flows into me. Life's in him. Life comes into me. I might not have felt it. I might not have known it. But the minute I made my life right with God, the minute I stepped over in Christ, all of a sudden... All of a sudden, when I step over into that place, everything Jesus did gets attributed to my account. Everything he did, I got. Everything he paid for belongs to me. I didn't do it. I didn't have to do it. I couldn't have done it. But the minute I step over into him, everything he did becomes mine. This is where it gets really good. But wait, there's more, okay? What happens here? See, when I step into that place, 
the new birth. I get born again. I'm in Christ. I'm in him. He's in me. When I step into that place, all of a sudden, all this gets downloaded into me. And everything he did, God sees me doing the same thing. God sees me in the same place. I'm in Christ. What do you mean by that? Well, when Jesus went to the cross, I was with him. When he died, I died with him. I was crucified. Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When he died, I died. When he's buried, I was buried. We're buried with him in baptism. We see that. When he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he descended into hell, that's where I deserved to go. When he went down there, I went with him. Physically speaking, spiritually speaking, no. But in the mind of God, when I stepped into Christ, everything he did got attributed to my account. I, was, I died with him. I was buried with him. I went into the depths of hell with him. I was quickened with him, made alive with him. When he went into the throne room of hell, I went there with him. When he destroyed him that had the power over death, that is the devil, I was with him when he did that. When he spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, I was with him. I was with him in that. I didn't see it. I didn't know it. But as far as God's concerned, when he went, he took me with him. I'm glad I didn't have to physically go. But he went and took, he took me in there. He took my place. And then when I identify with him, say, I don't understand how that works. Well, let's put it this way. You ever watch a, like a major NFL game or something, and you got your team, and you're not going on the field. But you got your team, and all of a sudden, if you're, if you're winning, you get just as excited as if you were on the sidelines. You'll jump up and go, we won, we won, we got a touchdown. What do you mean you got a touchdown? You weren't on that field down there. <laughs> we identify with somebody. Say, well, what did your, my team won. My team, what do you mean your team won? That means I have a team I identified with. When they win, I win. Yeah. Yeah. When Jesus died, I died. Yeah. When he bore stripes for healing, I got a healing. Yeah. When he took care of my mind, I got my mind taken care of. When he died, I died. When he's buried, I was buried. When he descended down there, I descended with him. When Jesus went into the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, regions of hell, when he went over into the throne room of Satan, I went with him. When he won, I won. When he spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, I went with him. I was there with him. Do you remember it? No. No, all I know is when I said, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life, all that got attributed to my account. It's all mine. Were you there? I wasn't there in the physical. I don't remember being there in the spirit, but God attributed that all to my account. When he conquered, I conquered. When he whipped him, I whipped him. Didn't stop there, though. Then when he was raised, if he be risen with Christ, when he's raised, I got raised too. When he was raised up, oh, Jesus was raised from the dead. That's great. But when I accepted him, I got raised up with him. I paid the price. He paid the price, and I rode along with him. I didn't have to go through the beatings. I didn't have to go through the whippings. I didn't have to go through the cat and nine tails. He went through all that. But when I said, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life, all that got, it came to my account. So when he's raised, I was raised. Didn't stop there. When he was raised, I was raised. When he sat down, I sat down with him. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ. You read what Paul says. He talks about who we are in Christ. In me, I'm not that much, but in him, I can do all things. When he sat down, I sat down. When all things are put under his feet, they're all under my feet. When he, when he had a body, I'm a part of his body. When he did all that, in those three days, Jesus did all those things. And all I got to do is say, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. All that's attributed to me. Oh, the devil's giving me trouble. No, we whipped him 2,000 years ago. Yeah, but I got devils that are they're, they're giving me fits. No, we whipped them 2,000 years ago. Yeah, but I'm having trouble with the world, the flesh, and the devil. No, I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus 2,000 years ago. Yeah, but, yeah, but, you know, the devil says he's going to get me. No, all things are under my feet. Yes. Jesus is the head. I'm in the body. It's all under my feet. I didn't do a thing to get that except... Make Jesus Lord of my life. When I stepped over into him, then that resurrection life started working in me. Resurrection life is working in me. The life, nature, and ability of God was imparted by inward man. God's not just looking for a body that'll rise up, walk the walk, talk the talk, and live the life. I am the righteousness of God in him. 
Not by my own works, but by what he did. He paid the price. I got the benefit. During those three days, during those three days, Jesus didn't just sit there and wait. He went down there and took care of us. And when the Holy Ghost came down there and connected with him, the price was paid. When he was raised, I was raised. And I'm still sitting there. He ever lives to make intercession for us. That's great, but I'm sitting right there with him. You're sitting right there. We need to start acting like we are who we are. It's time for the church to rise above being the devil's doormat. It's time for the church to rise above getting beat, sick, poor, sorry. It's time for the church to rise up and go, I am the righteousness of God in him. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and I am not beneath. No weapon formed against me is ever going to prosper. Jesus paid the price, but he gave the victory unto me. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm part of that remnant called the body of Christ. Well, we ought to stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much. Thank you for what Jesus did for us, what he's done in us, but what he's yet to do through us. Thank you, dear Father, for what you did for us. You placed us in this position. You paid the price. What Jesus did, he did for me. What he did, he did in me. What he did in his death, burial, and resurrection, he took my place and took me with him. And I'm grateful for that, dear Father. Hallelujah. I'm now seated in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't have to look out and see what the devil's doing. I can look down below under my feet and see what he's doing down there. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name, dear Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And dear Father, I pray right now, anybody in the sound of my voice, they've never tapped into that, never stepped into that, never been born again. Never accepted Jesus as the one who paid for my mistakes. There's no sin I could have committed that he didn't already pay for. No mistake I could have made that he didn't already pay the price for. There's no sickness he didn't already cover. There's no mental anguish he didn't already pay for. He took what Adam lost and he purchased us back. He became the last Adam. So, Father, I pray for anybody in the sound of my voice. Dear Father, I pray for anybody in this house, anybody watching online. Their life just isn't right never been saved, never accepted Jesus, didn't know what he did, didn't know why he did, why he paid the price. Anybody in the sound of my voice, in the house or online, dear Lord, I pray for them right now. I ask you to stir their hearts. Let them know, Jesus, we know from the scriptures you must be born again. Jesus paid the price, but it doesn't do us any good until we accept that sacrifice. If there's anybody that has not gotten right with you, dear Lord, Anybody lost, unsaved, let them know today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Dear Lord, if there's anyone that doesn't know if they're saved or not, I pray that this will be the turning point where from now on they'll never wonder if they're saved or not. They can make that decision and know they're the righteousness of God in Christ. They're a new creature in Christ. Father, if there's anyone that backslid away from you, no fellowship with Father God, price has been paid. But if there are those that are away from you, I ask you to stir their hearts, Lord. Let them know this is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. So, Father, I ask you, man or woman, boy or girl, young man, young woman, Father, anybody here, lost, unsaved, don't know if they're saved or not, backslidden away from you, no fellowship at all. Father, I ask you, stir their heart today. I pray that today will be a turning point that it'll never, it, they'll never turn around and go back. So while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and Christians are praying, if you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, that's me, or even if you're watching online, Pastor, that's me, things are not right with, between me and God. Things aren't right. I want to get that changed today. I want to know I'm in the family of God. I want to accept what Jesus did for me. He paid the price for me that I could have an abundant life down here. Anybody here that say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to get my life right today. If that's you, just wave your hand at me. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else says, pray for me. I need to get some things right with God today. I'm away from God. If I died tonight, I don't know if I'd go to heaven or not. Heaven's not a hope so, it's a no so. Once you get born again, you don't have to wonder if you're going. Hallelujah. Anyone here? Say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I want, to, I want to get back into fellowship with him. I've been away from God. That's you. Wave your hand at me. Good. Thank you. Anybody else?
Pray for me. I need to get things right. Good, thank you. Anybody else? Say, pray for me. Jesus paid for me. I want to unite with him. He paid for all my mistakes. I just want to accept that. I don't have to do anything to get right. He got me right all on his own. All I have to do is accept that. Anybody else? Any, good, thank you. Anybody else? Say, pray for me. I need to get some things right today. I want to leave church today. I'm going to make Easter Sunday my turning point. I want to leave here today knowing he was raised for me. He paid for me. He died for me. He's raised for me. I want him to be alive in me. Anybody else? Just, just wave your hand at me. Anybody else? Say, pray for me. I want, I want to get things right today. God's not going to hold anything against you. You can't do anything. You couldn't have done anything that God would hold against you. does anything you've ever done. Jesus paid for when he died on the cross. He took the sins of humanity. It was the turning point for the world. Three days. Anybody else? Real quickly, just raise your hand up. I want to pray for you. Anyone else? Okay, I see it. I think I saw that hand there before. Good. Good. Anybody else? Anybody else? It just seems like there's somebody else. I remember, I remember going to meetings with, with, with white knuckles. I'd, I'd hang on to the chair in front of me. They're giving invitations, and I'd hang on to the chair in front of me. I thought if I let go, I'm going down to the front, and I don't know if I'm ready for that or not. Finally, one day, I just gave in. Walked down an aisle. 1972, never been the same. Seems to me there's somebody kind of hanging on to the chair in front of you. Just don't know if you're ready to make that decision or not. Trust me. You want to. Just seems like there's one more. Not going to get in a rush, but we'll wait for you. Seems like there's somebody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good, good. All right, good. All right, if you look up here at me, if that's you, you raised your hand, or even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should have, or wish you would have, that's all right, it's never too late. I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'm going to ask you to step out from where you're standing. I just want to pray not only for you, I want to pray with you. I want to know when you leave here, you got what you came for. If you raised your hand, or even if you didn't, but you wish you would have, would you just step out in the aisle and come down and join me down here in front? It's not the only way. I know it's just as easy to pray just a simple prayer and have you, have you follow after me in that. But there's something about making that step to go forward. Hey, guys. You ready for a change? Good. Good, good. What's your name? Dane. Dane? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Appreciate you coming, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. You, you're ready for a change in some things. Good, good, good. Ever been saved before? Yeah? You've been saved? You've just been away from God? Yeah. Yeah. You ready to come back, though? Most definitely. Good. If you'll just stay here just for a minute. There's a few more hands. If you want to come join us, we'll wait for you. A few more hands. You might as well come on down. We'll wait for you. Hallelujah. Are you with this gentleman? You're going to wait for him. God bless you. That's good. Did you bring him today? Uh, Miss Minnie did. Uh, Miss Minnie did. Miss Minnie's a good, she's good people. You know that. Hallelujah. Well, we'll wait. Just seems like there's a few more people. We'll wait for you. All right. Well, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's pray. If you'll just pray this prayer after me, everybody, then you do the same thing. Oh God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I want to be right with you. I want to be saved and know I'm saved. I want to be in relation with you. I want to be in fellowship with you. I want to live with you. I want to live for you. I want to spend eternity with you. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you for pay, uh, paying the price. Thank you for the blood that was shed. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life today. And I'll never turn back. I'll walk with you all my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. If you wouldn't mind going with this couple right here. They're just off to a side room. They're just going to share a couple of verses with you. Make sure you got what you came for. Hallelujah. Well, we ought to lift our hands. Now go ahead and give them a hand. Give them a hand.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 